On day one, I spawned in as a baby skeleton, surrounded by other skeletons. I wasn't sure why I was here, but I couldn't remember anything. Why am I the only one who's a baby? Just then, the Grim Reaper appeared and told us, If you don't regain your lost souls within 100 days, you will become skeletons forever. And I won't make it easy for you. <laughs> The stakes rose when the other skeletons panicked and rushed outside to complete this impossible task. They were quickly met with the sun's rays, burning them to a crisp. I have a hundred days, but I can only travel at night? On day two, I traversed through the cave, seeing that traveling during the day wasn't going to cut it. I realized I only had five hearts, so I had to be careful. Just then, I discovered a group of zombies plotting alone. What are they up to? Oh, a little baby skeleton. Killing you will please the Reaper greatly. They attacked, and I tried to use the bow I had in my inventory to fend them off. However, at my size, it wasn't going to do much damage at all. I can't die! Not yet! In the lick of time, a spider scurried up to me. Quickly, hop on! I hopped on the spider's back and he took off, leaving the Grim Reaper's lackeys in the dust. What's your name? I don't know. What's yours? Call me Peter. On day three, Peter took me to his colony underground. The entire city was full of spiders. Normally I'd be scared, but you guys seem cool. Peter then took me to the elder of the colony. How can we help you, little one? I quickly explained that my memories had been lost and I needed to find my soul before my 100 days were over. How are you supposed to find your soul if you don't even know your name? I don't know. Well, you won't last long alone. Take this food, arrows, and an axe. Axe? Wait, axe. Axe rhymes with Max! Max, come inside for dinner. Whoa, I remember my name. Call me Max. How about I come with you? I know these parts like the back of my eight legs. That would be amazing! Well, take care, you two. The Grim Reaper is a ruthless man who will do anything to get what he wants. Don't worry, we will. I hopped on Peter's back and we left the colony as a team. On days four through seven, it was finally nightfall, so I decided to take advantage of the evening. I punched some trees and gathered enough wood to make a crafting bench. Afterwards, I made myself a set of wooden tools. All right, it's stone time. I mined for cobblestone and then upgraded to stone tools as quickly as possible. By the time I was done, the sun was beginning to peak over the horizon. I better head back. I can't risk the daylight touching me. I returned underground and began to build a base. I cleared out some of the stone and built a room for both Peter and I to stay in using the materials I had. It's a start, and at least there won't be any sun harming us. As I wrapped up, Peter approached me with food for us. I ate some, transforming me into an adult. I now had 10 hearts. Whoa, you also got bigger. Yeah. I guess I'm larger than a normal spider now. With the base prepped and night beginning to fall once again, I set off in search of more clues about my past. On days 8 through 12, I explored through the night looking for more materials. I returned to the caves and found one of the Reaper minions terrorizing another skeleton. Hey, leave her alone! They didn't listen, so I shot them down with my bow and arrows. They didn't like that, so they charged at me and our battle began. He wasn't the flashiest, but he didn't have to be. His strength said everything it needed to. I used a combination of my sword and bow to fend him off, but the battle was tough. The monster cornered me, hitting me into a wall. Wait a second. Your people and your kingdom will fall. What the? Have we done this before? How would I know? All your skellies look the same. The battle continued, but I could tell he was on his last legs. Using all my might, I pulled back my bow, killing the Reaper minion. Booyah! Upon his death, he dropped a map titled Lost Soul. Thanks so much for your help. I'm Shelly. <laughs> Shelly the Skelly? Haha, <laughs> very funny. Look, that map leads to my soul, but I'm too weak to fight the Guardian. Leave it to me. On days 13 through 15, Shelly and I followed the map at nightfall. After a lot of traveling, we found ourselves at the nest of a massive mutant wither skeleton, guarding a blue flame. That's it. That's my soul. Shh. Unfortunately, we made too much noise, and the skeleton woke up from its slumber and instantly attacked. Shelly quickly ran off to hide. I pulled out my bow and began to fire arrows at the beast, but I was still much too weak to fight it. The skeleton overwhelmed me, and I lost. We both ran away from the big monster. 
I guess we'll have to come back when I'm stronger. Dang, how am I going to survive this mess? I can't really answer that. But for the time being, you're welcome to stay at my base. On days 16 through 19, I returned home with Shelly. I quickly built her a room, making sure to include a crafting bench and a chest. Thank you so much for the hospitality, Max. Of course. Now that we have a minute, what do you know about the Grim Reaper? I know about as much as you do. We're all looking for our souls and we'll stop at nothing for them. But I'm on your side. Same for me. After our talk, I went mining for more materials, finding iron and coal. I then made a furnace, smelting the iron and then crafting some iron tools and boots. After all that work, it was now nighttime, so I had to take advantage. Exploring time! After some walking, I found a bunch of gravel, which I dug for flint. After that, I went to a field, cutting grass for wheat seeds. With the seeds in hand, I lured some chickens back home. Welcome to the base, little guys. I quickly built them a small pen. Now I'll have plenty of feathers for arrows. On days 20 through 22, I wanted to find a way to get stronger, so I asked Peter what he thought. Doesn't milk make bones stronger? I guess that's worth a shot. I went mining, quickly finding more iron. I then crafted a bucket and went out in search of some cows for milk. After a bit of traveling, I landed in a plains biome, but what stood at the center wasn't a regular cow. What the? I can't milk you. No. I pressed on and located another field, but this one was also full of skeleton cows. I wanted to get to the bottom of this, so I kept looking. At the far end of the field was one of the Grim Reaper's minions, transforming normal cows into skeletons. Hey, what gives? Without a word, the minion attacked me. I used my bow and arrows to chip him down from afar. He was skilled with a sword and would slash me down with ease, but I was tougher than I looked. After a lot of back and forth, I managed to emerge the victor. Upon his death, he dropped some wheat as well as an iron bow. Wow, this is gonna help a lot. I used the wheat to lure some of the cows back home. There, I built them a pen and milked them using my bucket. Bottoms up. I drank the milk, and to my surprise, I gained a few hearts. Uh huh, I guess that worked. I tried to drink some more in hopes of getting more hearts, but nothing happened. So it's a one time thing. Still helpful though. On days 23 through 26, night fell once again, so I decided to explore a bit more. During my travels, I stumbled upon a village, so I went to take a closer look. Once I entered the town, however, all of the villagers rushed inside their homes. What's wrong with everyone? Mommy, I'm scared. Don't worry, we're safe inside. Man, I don't like scaring people. Sorry. I made my way through the town and passed by a local bakery. Wow, that smell reminds me of... Wow, Mom, this cake is delicious. I'm glad you like it, Max. I baked it with love for you. She was such a nice lady. I hope I see her again soon. Suddenly, a group of the Reaper's minions ambushed me. I took out my weapons and began to beat them down. We were evenly matched. Neither of us were giving an inch. Worst of all, the sun was beginning to rise. They're gonna keep you here so you burn, little skeleton. Not on my watch. I quickly put an end to the battle and ran as fast as I could to a nearby cave. I made it inside just as the sun rose. Ooh, that was close. On days 27 through 30, I traveled through the cave to head back to my base. On the way, I trained myself on a few mobs, which I took out with ease. I've definitely improved. As I got closer to home, I found some iron, which I gathered for safekeeping. I finally arrived and smelted the ore I found into ingots. I then crafted some iron armor and an iron sword to aid me in future battles. As night fell, I was feeling very confident in my skill set, as well as my tools. I think it's time to return to the mutant wither skeleton. I traveled back to the skeleton's nest where I found both him and Shelly's soul waiting. I didn't have time for introductions though. The skeleton immediately leapt at me. He took out his two blades and began to slash me down. Each of his attacks would wither me, making it difficult to keep my health up. Luckily, I had plenty of food and my armor to lessen each of his blows. He continued to come at me with a multitude of attacks, but I was slowly getting the edge on him. After one final hit, I managed to slay the wither skeleton once and for all. He bursted into pieces on the floor. Woohoo! The skeleton dropped a small flame that seemed to draw me in. I picked it up. Whoa, this is so warm and familiar. Is this a piece of my soul? Thank you for saving our village. You're the mightiest warrior we know. Defending people is what I do. I'm always happy to help. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip, hip, hip hooray! Hip hip, hip, hip hooray! Hip, hip, hooray. I remember now, I was a powerful warrior, but why was the Grim Reaper there? On days 31 through 34, I thought hard, but I couldn't remember anything else. I decided to press on and quickly retrieved Shelly's soul from the nest. Wow, it's so warm. I hope I find the rest of mine soon. I rushed home with the precious cargo in hand and returned the soul to Shelly. As she picked it up, she suddenly transformed back into a human. I'm alive! 
Thank you, Max! What do you think you're gonna do now? I'll stick around here. After all, someone needs to help you too. I'll get you anything you need during the day. Really? Sweet! After that, I went mining to refill my supply of materials and to pass the time until nightfall. I managed to find iron, coal, and even diamond. Oh, do I have plans for you! I returned to the base and made myself a diamond pickaxe. I know had a one-way ticket to the nether for later. Once I was done, I expanded the base with more rooms, including a chest room and bedrooms for any other skeletons who needed my help. Huh, this is nice, but I want things to feel more skeleton-y. On days 35 through 38, I set off in search of a desert. On my way, I discovered a couple skeletons who looked lost. Hi, can I help you two? We're searching for our souls. We're pretty sure they'll be together since we're soulmates. Oh, that's sweet. I can help you find them. We would love that. I gave them a map to my base and continued forward. I finally located some bone blocks and mined them. Afterwards, I returned home with my new decorations and replaced parts of the base to give it skeleton accents. Okay, this is looking much better. I was spending some time at the base when suddenly Peter rushed to me in a panic. A colony is being attacked. Help! I hopped onto Peter's back and rode off towards the colony. On days 39 through 42, we rushed back to Spider City. Once we arrived, the place was in ruin and filled with the Grim Reaper's minions. This is horrible! I took out my weapons and began to pick them off one by one. The spiders had already done good damage to them, so I was able to finish up where they left off. However, I wasn't fast enough to stop one from swarming the Elder. He attacked and dealt a lethal blow. Hope helping that little skeleton was worth it. Shut your mouth! I jumped in and killed the minion, but it was too late. The Elder was already on his last legs. Max, I'm glad to see you're okay. Please, take care of my people. Before I could speak another word, he died. No. No! Max, you're okay. Please take care of yourself. Mom, no! My mom is dead? What happened to her? On days 43 through 46, I needed to get my mind off my latest memory, so I went exploring. During my travels, a head bounced up to me. Ah! Don't run! I need your help! What, what, what do you want? I lost my body near the forest. Can you help me find it? I'll make it worth your while. Sure. I then went on an extensive hunt looking for his headless body. After much searching, I finally found it. It quickly turned in my direction and charged me. Hey, stop! I'm trying to help you! The body continued to attack me, so I had no choice but to retaliate. After many back and forths, the body finally fell. Ooh, that was unfortunate. I better go tell the guy the bad news. I returned to the head and told him what happened. You what? Sorry, man. It was gonna kill me. Well, now... I'm gonna kill you! Please don't! The bodiless head began hopping towards me to deal some damage. Ah, stop biting my ankles! I took him out pretty quickly, and when I did, he dropped a letter. What's this? It read, kill one of the skeletons and I'll reunite you with your body. Grim Reaper. He's turning us on each other? I better be careful. On days 47 through 50, I returned home from my exploration and decided to spiff up the base a little bit. I added some slabs and other blocks to give things more dimension. That's a little prettier. Once I was done with my enhancements, I checked on Peter to see what he was up to. I'm feeling really sad about my colony. Everything was destroyed. Then let's invite everyone here. I expanded the base with dozens of rooms for all the spiders to stay in. Peter even added webs so they felt right at home. Once the necessary preparations were made, I invited the survivors inside and gave them all food for their troubles. Thank you, Max. I'm gonna go spend some time with my family. Peter went to hang out with his loved ones, but I felt a little sad. I miss my mom. I have to figure out what happened to her. Just then, the skeleton couple approached me. We have a new lead. Last night, we both had a dream that took place in the nether. We think that's where our souls must be. Well, I know where I'm headed. Headed next. Using my diamond pickaxe, I headed deep into the mines and got myself some obsidian. Afterwards, I built a portal and lit it with flint and steel. To the nether! On days 51 through 53, I arrived at the nether in search of souls. Everything seemed normal until I stumbled upon a weird looking ghast. Why do you look like a skeleton? Just then, the Grim Reaper appeared in front of me. Ah, the little skeleton that's been stirring up trouble. What do you want? I'm going to reap the souls of everyone and become the most powerful creature there ever was. Very original. You won't be laughing long. 
Just then, the Grim Reaper summoned a nameless and vanished without a trace. I had no choice but to fight it out with the sorcerer. The sorcerer sent balls of magic flying at me from afar. I tried to come in close with my sword, but he was prepared. He teleported towards me and summoned an army of clones. He was clearly trying to overwhelm me with his numbers. This is not a fair fight! I continued to cut down his minions with my sword. Thank goodness I had my armor to protect me from their onslaught of attacks, but I knew I would have to change my approach. I gotta fight with fire! On days 54 through 57, I continued the battle with the Nameless. I eventually took out my bow and began to send arrows back. You're not the only one with range! My training had really paid off because I was able to put up a fight with the combination of my sword and bow. After a lot of battling, I took down the Nameless. All of his remaining goons vanished after he fell. It'll take more than that to defeat me. The Nameless dropped another soul fragment, which I quickly retrieved. One piece closer to being human again. Your time is up. Your soul belongs to me now. Says who? Leave my father alone. Hiya! 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 You won't get away with this! You can't stop me, foolish mortal. I'm the Grim Reaper. You will regret this day. I'll return and take more than just your father. Whoa. So the Grim Reaper has always been my enemy. Dang. What a jerk. With my new soul fragment and memories, I continue deeper into the nether. On days 58 through 60, I dove deeper into the dangerous nether to search for the soulmate's lost souls. In the distance, I saw a blue soul flame flickering. There they are! I think I see them! Before I could reach them, a pair of skeleton archers appeared to protect their soul treasure. <laughs> it's never easy, is it? Hey, I need those souls for my friends! <laughs> I like, like your energy. energy. It's explosive. The archers drew their bows and started firing at me, shooting explosive arrows that were destroying the ground beneath me. Whoa, that's new! The battle was intense. One of the archers shot an onslaught of regular arrows at me. I did my best to dodge each of them, but the occasional one would hit me. Ow! The explosive archer was much more of a problem. If I got hit, it would be lights out for me. Luckily, I dodged their explosions enough to survive. I took them both down, and when they died, they dropped their explosive arrows. I picked some up to save for later. Cool! This could come in handy. I grabbed the soulmate souls and rushed back to the base to give them the good news. Guys, I found your souls! I plopped down their souls in front of them, and they happily picked them up. Oh my gosh, thank you so much! I can feel it! We're becoming human again! With the blinding light, the skeleton couple suddenly transformed back into humans! Wow, how could we ever repay you? I'm just happy I could help. Really? Wait a minute, I'm starting to remember again. Yeah, I think I remember you. I think you were the great warrior who protected our village! Either that, or we had math together third period. Really? Wow! Well, then I'm glad I could help protect you once more. On days 61 through 64, I focused on taking care of supplies for our base. We would need a lot to make it long enough to get my soul back, but we weren't producing enough animals without grass. Shelly offered to take the animals to the surface during the day and then move them back into the base at night. Smart thinking, Shelly. Thanks. With our farm growing, we started making plenty of wheat for the journey ahead. Leaving Shelly to take care of the supplies, I went exploring in the mines. I dug deeper underground than I've ever gone before and I stumbled onto a diamond patch. I took it back to the base to create shiny new diamond leggings. Now I feel ready for anything. Before setting off again, I decided to expand the base a little bit to increase morale. I started with a common area where everyone could mingle, fit with chairs and chests. Next, I built an entrance, making sure it matched the same skeleton aesthetic. Phew, that's enough building for now. On days 65 through 68, I needed to find the rest of my soul fragments. So I talked to the newly human soulmates to see if they remembered any more clues. Max, I'm glad I caught you. I just had a dream that you were checking out books in my library back in my old town. Maybe it's a clue. Oh, really? Interesting. Maybe it is. Huh. I'll go look for a library for more clues. With a new clue under my belt, I set off to find a library to see if it held any information about my human life before I was the skeleton. After exploring for a while, I found one of the desert and decided to investigate. 
investigate. At least I remember I like to read. I've had so much to do today. Hopefully this library will know something about me. I entered the library and couldn't help but feel like somebody or something was watching me. Is somebody in here? Hello? Suddenly a lone stray popped out and scared me. Ah! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please don't hurt me. Don't hurt you? I thought you were gonna hurt me. Why, should I? My name is Cora. I've been looking for help, but everyone just cares about themselves. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. How can I help? My 100 days are up tomorrow. I'm running out of time and I don't know what to do. Oh no, that's terrible. Let me help you. I couldn't let Cora do this alone. She told me about her clues and we started to search the library together. On days 69 through 71, I investigated the library further for clues. Unfortunately for me, I was only able to find a bunch of old books. Book, book, book. Huh, I think I remember my mom reading this. I swear, every book this author writes is their best one yet. So you really liked it then? Loved it. Why was the Reaper at my house? Ugh, I can't remember. Later while searching, I noticed a hidden lever that opened a secret passage. I pressed onward to see what was waiting inside. There, I found a massive archive and Cora's soul sitting on a pedestal. Bingo! However, before I had a chance to grab it, a monster appeared before me. What the? Where did that come from? Without warning, the giant choker box began to fight me. I began by using my sword, but it really wasn't making a dent. I had to resort to using my explosive arrows to try and make a dent on him. In retaliation, he sprouted crazy spider legs and chased me around the room. He even spit something at me that made me start floating into the air. Whoa, whoa, let me down! After a close battle, I rushed in and slashed it with my sword, killing it. Woohoo! After that, I rushed to the pedestal and grabbed Cora's soul. I ran to her as fast as I could to make sure she was reunited with her soul before her 100 days were up. I made it just in time and she transformed back into a human. Thank you so much. It feels good to be alive again. I'm glad I was able to help. On days 72 through 76, I was at a Leeds, so I decided to seek out my old home from when I was alive. Surely there are some clues there. I traveled through multiple biomes. I realized that 90.4% of the people watching aren't actually subscribed. Change that now. Subscribe. I camped out during the days and fought off monsters at night. They were a breeze with my explosive arrows. After a lot of traveling, I finally managed to find my home, but it was in ruin. What happened here? Just then, the Grim Reaper appeared before me. So I see you're trying to remember your past. When will you give up your little quest and admit it's fruitless? I don't care about you or your minions. I'm gonna find out what happened to my family. You're annoying both dead and alive. What did I do to you? You don't have the right to know. We ran at each other and started swinging our weapons full force. Our blades clashed, but he still had the upper hand of being able to fly. I could barely catch him like this. So I pulled out my bow and started firing my special explosive arrows to deal some massive damage. Sadly, it wasn't enough for the Lord of Darkness. At my current strength, I was no match for him. I had no choice but to flee before the Grim Reaper took my life. He can't keep getting away with this. I'm gonna find out what happened. On days 77 through 80, I returned home and continued my work on the base. I started by completing the skull entrance. I refined the tunnel leading to the base by adding bones that look like ribs. Lastly, I gave the skull some finishing touches to finalize the entrance. This is metal! Once the entrance was completed, I added finishing details inside the base itself. I added skull accents, beds for the newly human residents, and even more paintings. With that, the base was finally complete. I like this one. It's cozy. Just then, Cora and the soulmates all walked up to me. Hey, what are you guys doing here? You've helped us so much. We wanted to give you a gift. They handed over a mysterious potion and asked that I drink it. I did what I was told and chugged down the whole bottle, transforming me into a mutant skeleton. As a mutant skeleton, I had 50 hearts and a ton more strength. Wow, thank you. I feel incredible. On days 81 through 83, I decided to test out my new strength on some mobs. Unsurprisingly, I was able to beat them down with ease. How do you like being exploded on? <laughs> I'm unstoppable. Unfortunately, I lost track of time and the sun began to rise. I thought I was finished, but when the sunlight hit me, nothing happened. Huh, I must be so strong that I'm immune to sunlight. I ran around the overworld in broad daylight for the first time in weeks. It felt amazing to be out at a different time other than night. After a lot of frolicking, I found myself in a snowy biome. I think I'm lost. I was getting a bit nervous when suddenly I spotted another skeleton relaxing in the snow. I approached him in hopes of finding some help. Hey, do you know where we are? <laughs> 
And you're drinking ketchup? No, thank you. The strange skeleton tossed over a compass. Oh, wow. Thanks. This will help a ton. <clears throat> right. I was about to leave when suddenly another skeleton appeared. <laughs> I should really get going. Oh man, all right. I decided to have a picnic with the skeleton brothers. It was actually quite pleasant, until it wasn't anymore. The two of them bickered with each other, paying little attention to me. I felt like I was in the middle of something I shouldn't be a part of. Uh, I think that's my cue to leave. With my new compass, I awkwardly made my way back home. On days 84 through 87, I returned home to find that all my animals had been transformed into skeletons. Ugh, this again? Who's been messing with my home? When I checked around the house, I was relieved to find everyone inside was safe and sound. Ooh, you guys had me a bit scared for a second. We did hear some ruckus outside. Did you see who it was? Unfortunately, no. Peter told me that the invaders were here only a few hours ago. If I move now, I might be able to catch up to them. When I got outside, I immediately found a skeletal sheep. Huh, they can't be too far from here. Maybe if I follow the trail of skeletal animals, it'll lead me to the culprit. While following the trail, I spotted another skeleton in a spooky suit. What are you doing out here? I'm Jack, Jack Skellington. I'm actually on a mission to become Santa Claus. Why would you want to do that? To become him, of course, and to give the poor guy a vacation. Can you help me? I guess? Agreeing to help, Jack and I set off together to find this Santa Claus. While traveling through the snow, we stumbled upon Santa's home. All right, there's Santa's place. Go do what you gotta do, I guess. Yes, I'll make it quick. I watched as Jack ran up to Santa's place and walked inside. Oh, what are you doing here? Hey, Santa, you just won a free trip to the Bahamas. Put on your swimsuit. Oh, yes. Mrs. Claus, grab the sunscreen. We're going on vacation. This is such an odd side quest. Jack then emerged from the home wearing Santa's clothes. I did it. Looking good, man. Thanks, Max. Good luck with your quest. No problem. Jeez, what a weirdo. With that, I continued following the trail of bones to find the monster behind this. On days 88 through 91, after following the trail for a few more miles, I arrived at a massive arena made of bones. Well, that looks incredibly ominous and dangerous. I better check it out. I entered the arena. There was a mysterious figure waiting for me at the center. Who are you? Ugh, oh, you finally arrived. The boss is tired of you messing with our plans. Why is he doing this? We didn't do anything to him. Sure, the boss likes to mess with people, torture them in the afterlife. But you, you're a different story. We both know you and the boss have an interesting relationship. He was trying to kill my parents. I had to stop him. That's not how this works. Those who are chosen must join the afterlife. I'm sick of this. I'll make this simple. Leave my base alone or I'll have to take drastic measures. Ha, <laughs> we'll see about that. The horseman charged at me with great speed and power. I immediately noticed that this wasn't a typical enemy. This was by far the toughest of the Grim Reaper's lackeys thus far. He would run me down with the speed of his skeleton horse and slash me with his powerful blade. I didn't have much time to react, but I couldn't back down now. I managed to take out his steed with an explosive arrow, leaving us on an even playing field. You're going down! On days 92 through 93, I continued my battle in the Bone Arena. We were neck and neck, but taking out the horse was just the advantage I needed. I used a combination of arrows and my sword to dwindle down his health. After a final push, I managed to come out on top. I did it! Upon his death, it dropped another piece of my soul. I ran towards it and took it for myself. Finally, the third piece... Uh... You again? What's going on here? Uh... Oh, Dad! I'm here to reap what is mine, and what is mine is your souls. I took you down once, I'll do it a second time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Max, be careful. Mom, no! Uh, I, I lost, but I'm the greatest warrior. I won't stop here. I've decided that all souls are going to belong to me now. <laughs> Mom. 
Max, you're okay. Please take care of yourself. No! Uh, I have to hang on. I, I have to save everyone. I... I remember everything. The Grim Reaper killed me and my parents. What he did was unforgivable. In that moment, I vowed to slay the Reaper and save everyone else from his wrath. On days 94 through 98, I returned home to prepare for battle. It's almost over. I've only got a few days left. This has to end now. In preparation for the final battle, I mined for diamonds to make more armor and weapons and packed enough food to last me for the rest of my journey. Just then, Peter approached me. Thank you for everything, Max. The spiders and I prepared a gift for you. Peter gave me a diamond bow. This is incredible. Thank you so much. Cora entered the room shortly after, holding a strange map. I've been working hard to pin down the whereabouts of the Reaper and I've finally succeeded. May this map guide you. I accepted the map and thanked everyone a final time before continuing towards what would be my final battle. I was about to leave when the skeleton hubby walked up to me. Hey, Max, could I talk to you for a second? Of course, man. What's up? Well, since I came back to life, there's something special I've wanted to do. Is there any way you could stick around a little longer? I'll make it quick. Um, sure, I guess? Perfect. The skeleton hubby gathered everyone together outside. His wife stood across from him. Why am I up here with you guys? I want you to officiate our wedding. Our wedding? Honey, we're already married. Yes, dear, but we said till death do us part. We died. Now that we're back alive again, I only figured it would be best to marry my best friend all over again. Oh, That's so sweet. So that's a yes then? You'll marry me all over again? Of course. That's all I need to hear. And now, by the power vested in me by Skeleton Hubby and Skeleton Wifey, it is my honor and delight to call you man and wife. Again! And just like that, their wedding was over. This has been great, guys, but I really need to go deal with the Grim Reaper. On day 99, I followed the map I got from Korra. On the way, I walked by a skeleton. Max? Wait, you know who I am? Of course I do, silly. I can recognize those cheekbones from a mile away. Who are you? I'm your gram gram, honey. Here you go, sweetie pie. I made you some cookies. You need them. You're nothing but skin and bones. Hello, Grandma. I love you. Gram Gram, it's so great to see you again. You too, Max. You look troubled, dear. Is everything all right? I'm going to fight the Grim Reaper, and I'm scared. What should I do? You try your best. That's really all I can give you. Oh, and these fresh baked cookies. Gram Gram, I love you! I said my goodbyes to Gram Gram and continued towards my final destination. After some traveling, I arrived at a giant ribcage surrounded by the Grim Reaper's goons. Well, this screams evil old skeleton. This must be the place. Place. I tried to enter the giant ribcage, but immediately got surrounded by the Reaper's goons. They attacked me from all sides and just kept coming. Even my explosive arrows weren't enough to hold them off. How many of them are there? There's too many! What do I do? Just then, an army of spiders rushed in to help, led by Peter. Peter? I thought you were gonna stay home! And leave you to fight this battle on your own? Bad chance. He then turned to his fellow spiders. Come on, boys. Just like we practiced. Peter's spider army served as the perfect distraction. This would buy me enough time to fight the big bad. Thanks, Peter. Don't mention it, buddy. Now, go fight that grim loser and get your soul back. All right. With that, I turned on my bony heel and entered into the ribcage with the time Peter and his spider friends bought me. On day 100, I finally arrived inside the ribcage. Sitting atop a massive skull throne was the Reaper. Reaper, you killed my family, hunted us down, killed my friends, and then you killed me. For that, you'll pay. And the last horse crosses the finishing line. Tell me, Max, do you remember the day you bested me? Of course I do. Why does that matter? I am the very embodiment of death. None can escape my reach. They may evade me for a time, but I will collect what is due eventually. Except you. Me? The day that you won, I was humiliated. A mortal defeating death? Absolutely preposterous. I vowed that I would reap all mortal souls and make you endure an eternity of suffering. But most importantly, I would never lose again. I have been waiting for this day, Max. Well, it's too bad that you're gonna have to keep waiting, cause you're about to lose this one. <laughs> we'll see about that. You are not the first mortal to try, and you certainly won't be the last. I charged towards the Reaper, my powerful diamond sword in hand. We traded blows. Two bitter enemies locked in battle. Hi -ya! Yeah. Yeah. 
I was swinging as hard and fast as I could, but he was parrying every single attack. Quit defending! Fight back already! Very well. Suddenly, I was blinded. Ah! What did you do to me? Make it stop! <laughs> Enjoy my ancient dark magic. Not many live long enough to experience it, and no one lives to tell the tale. Without my vision, I had to switch tactics. I fired explosive arrows in every direction I could. Try dodging this! You fool. Your penny weapons do not scare me. Right as I started to regain my vision, the Reaper charged at me. And with a giant blow, the Reaper hit me so hard that I flew across the room. <coughs> the Reaper slowly walked over to me. How does it feel, Max, to be thwarted, to be beaten, to be humiliated? <laughs> I was about to ask you the same thing. What? I took advantage of his momentary distraction and plunged my sword deep into his bony torso, killing him. The Reaper had dropped a small item on the ground, and I walked over to pick it up. I had finally retrieved the last piece of my soul, and with it, I was finally whole. I did it! I'm alive again! 